Tom Kinch ruins fun. I hate how he makes every single bot lane super safe. And I also love that SK Gaming followed up with a priority pick of luck. So Zaya Rakan is open. SK Gaming say, take it. I dare you. But you know what else is open? Interestingly enough, is Draven. Draven Morgana. Take it. I dare you. And honestly, <laughs> it's been a long time since I've seen OG really go ham in the bottom side of the map. They were pretty comfortable in the Sonataric meta. Taking the Sonataric. We saw it when they were playing up against the LCS teams. Now the Jarvan and the Nico though will be the lock in Nico, of course. Still a flex pick, not entirely sure where it'll go, and a safe kind of flexible jungle pick for Cold as well. It can be flexed in between that mid and top lane. I have a feeling it'll go into Alfari's hands. It's definitely a champion that he uh, likes to prioritize up there. And in tandem with the Jarvan, you then have that really great combination of the AP and the AD and the strong 2v2 top side of the map. Because Origin, they don't really play around Newtek. And I agree with kind of what Vettius is saying. They maybe need to go back to that style, but they've been playing a lot more attention to Alfari. Yeah, I'm going to be paying a lot more attention to this jungle matchup because that is a Vi now locked in. His second Vi. His second Vi. Uh, an LCL special from the previous season. Saw a lot of people bringing this one out and curious to see what self can get done with it. And this does feel to me like a bit of a playmaker in the jungle, which is exactly what you want for self-made. And rounding it out with an Ezreal for crown shot, I honestly feel like SK Gaming so far have are kind of like following the recipe for success, at least from what they've shown previously on the split. So the idea with Lux Ezreal is that you cannot beat this lane hard enough to make it not count. Lux Ezreal can almost get out of anything, no matter what the 2v2 matchup is going to be into the bot lane. And then once they get into lane phase, if a single binding hits, the uh, line damage between the Lux ultimate, between the Ezreal ultimate, you throw a Mystic Shot on top of it, just delete someone. Yeah, you absolutely do not want people to line up. And on top of that, you have a point and click in the form of buy. So chances are a single member exposes themselves at any point on this origin lineup that they will just be absolutely deleted by the sheer amount of burst possible between these three champions. On the SK Gaming side, as we enter the second ban phase, curious to see what gets taken away. The solo laners have not been picked up by SK Gaming yet. They're going to take the cannon. I wouldn't be surprised to see something like a Gnar follow up here, maybe a Jace as well, something in Sakurai's wheelhouse, maybe Vladimir, it really depends on what approach they want to take. Vladimir has kind of been Sakurai's go-to champion when he needs to blind pick into a flexible matchup and then just try to uh, outscale it or safely survive it. And you know what's crazy? Is that both Kiana and Mordekaiser are up and available. Pike though, banned away. Not something that I often expect to see banned up against Mithy, but still. I like the fact that Patrick pivoted to Sivir, knowing that uh, Tom Kench wasn't there. Tom Kench's presence in the meta unlocks a lot of champions like Ash and Varus. They almost just cannot be played in this meta without the safety that the Devour access is there. So by having a more self-sufficient ADC like a Sivir, um, it'll completely kind of change up what the 2v2 matchup is going to be in this bot lane. So I then like the response from SK Gaming to say, OK, get rid of all of the things that like to hard engage or have kill pressure like that pike. Yeah, all the champions that can free roam now that Sipper is that strong independent carry who does not need a Tom Kench to save. The Yasuo, though, taken off the board. Nuketuck, of course, a very uh, prolific Yasuo player. Patrick, as well, I know, enjoys the champion, although Nuketuck, I think, has assured us, as he, at least he did during Rift Rivals, that he was the superior Yasuo player. But it will be taken away. That's a throwback. That is a throwback. And I would be very surprised to see Alessandra locked in. I really thought the nerfs would have taken her out pretty much permanently, but we'll see if that is what they want to opt to go for. Instead, it looks like it will be the Nautilus, a solid, hard engage option, can also roam as well. So, Minty set up to either support this 2v2 matchup or try to find uh, success elsewhere. Yeah, I like the response. Um, I'm actually curious if the Yasu was the priority over something like a Nautilus, or even the Pike was a priority over something like a Nautilus with that point click CC. You might get your wish there though, Dracos. I don't know why you'd hover it unless you mean to pick it, because you're reminding your opponents that it's left up and available. That is! A Mordekaiser lock-in. Now, if you remember last time OG played against a Mordekaiser, it was against XL, and while they did lose the early game, Mordekaiser got blasted. So we will have to find out if OG want to pull out the vein. They could still last pick it for Alfari. This could uh, maybe be a flex. I mean, they could still technically run the Nico into it. I would imagine that it'd have kind of a similar time uh, up there as the vein did. Yeah. Nico, of course, is a lot of hard CC as well, so kind of difficult for Mord if he doesn't land the initial uh, grasp to really find a kill there. What will the final pick for OG be? I, you have to imagine they're feeling pretty confident that it is Mordekaiser in the top lane and Twisted Fate in the mid lane, lining up with what we expect from Pyrian and his play style, very much control mage style. A bit more roaming, though, coming in from the TF. And while Azir has been banned away, folks, we will have Corky Twisted Fate, a slight variation 
on the existing meta. But with gold cards in play, it's always going to be a little bit more exciting. And with a lot of uh, point and click setup. So there's multiple CC setups for both of these teams right now, which means there is a lot of gank pressure. So again, anytime uh, self-made and colder in the game, all eyes are going to be on them. Very different jungle styles, however. And I'm curious what self-made is going to do with his early pathing, if he's just going to try to hard rush towards level six, if he's going to look for windows around level three and level four to maybe get off some early ganks. And of course, the struggle for Vi is uh, the Vault Breaker combined with the Flash is a bit more telegraphed than any other skill in the game. Pretty slow moving, pretty slow to charge, unlike the drag, uh, the flag drag flash that you can get from side of the Jarvan. But we're gonna have to see what the early game options are going to be. SK Gaming throwing us a curveball. Not only is it a melee champion for Sakura, it's like the furthest away from comfort that we've seen him on yet. Have to see what his Mordekaiser can show us. The last Mordekaiser Alfari played against didn't get to play the lane at all. The least amount of damage that any top laner had done in the LEC. Not a stat that I imagine that Expect is proud of. And as we get ready, folks, SK Gaming versus Origin, our final game of the first half of the split. This will lock the standings in the first half. We are going to see who comes out on top. So get ready for our final game here. Both lineups ready on stage. A lot of comfort. Some new picks here on the side of SK. OG hitting us with what I feel like is pretty stock standard for the current meta. As we get ready to go into game. This is it, ladies and gentlemen, the match you've all been waiting for. Origin versus SK Gaming. One team will walk away with a win tonight. Oh, Origin fan out there in the, in the audience, I hear you. We'll see if we can get them to win, move them up to 5-4 in the standings. OG, despite a lackluster previous week, are still pretty close to the top of the table. So losing a game here is actually a pretty big disaster, and winning it means everything. Origin said that they were slow to ramp, but they assured their fans that they would return to form in time for playoffs. We'll see if that starts now. Checking in on the keystones, um, just as we suspected, Alfari swapping to the press the attack, so going for the on hit Nico, uh, and probably trying to play this lane very similar to the first time he played Mordekaiser with the Vayne, and using that range advantage and trying to stack up those auto attacks. Mord really excels when he's into a lot of melee based champions, so I think that Origin's composition, the fact that they have Corky, Sivir, and Nico, might cause a lot of problems for how he wants to play out these team fights. And while it's not the Vayne, the Vayne, of course, very slippery, very hard to lock down, so in terms of Trading, it might be a little bit easier as it's land easier to land that Death's Grasp, the also crucial pull in effect from the Mordekaiser. Uh, press the attack, and the fact that Nico has much more CC is going to mean that there's a lot more kill pressure on Sakurai. Should also mean that um, Cold does need to give Alfari the, the time of day, not again to gank his lane or anything like that, to, but to provide some reassurance that uh, this can be a strong side of the map to allow Alfari to play out this matchup. And any time we talk about uh, one jungler, I always want to hit the other one. And for Selfmade, I feel like it's even more important for the side of SK because last season, Selfmade was the defining factor for this team. It was make or break when Selfmade was making plays. And this season, I don't know if it's that he's on a leash, I don't know that he's playing more reserved, but I just feel like we have not seen that same level of Selfmade, the crazy Sejuani plays that we saw in spring. I'm going to disagree slightly, just in the sense that when you kind of think back to the early stage games, it was still Selfmade that was making a lot of these crazy plays, but SK across the board haven't been finding wins. And I think it's just because if Selfmade doesn't step up, no one else is standing up to say, yes, I can also participate here. So um, while it's easy to kind of point the finger at Selfmade, that it looks like this is all his fault, that he He's the one letting the team down. I think it's just because he is the team right now. And so someone needs to stand up with him before SK Gaming can start finding that success. And when they brought on Sakura, it was supposed to be this carry top laner that made such a splash in EU Masters. And we'll have to see what Sakura can do with the Mord. But my eyes then turn to Dreams, the other big playmaker on this team. And now the thing that I like about this composition for Oscar is that Dreams is on a champion with hard CC. The worst games for SK feel like games where Dreams is on Tom Kench. When Dreams has the power to engage. I feel like we always have to give a little bit more credit to that following because Crown Shot, you can have mixed opinions on it, but he has had some incredible performances. While we are talking about uh, the junglers, though, I'll hold it as some trading happens. I don't know what's going to happen here. Not a whole ton of follow-up, just uh, Patrick focus on the wave. Ooh, both junglers, though. Ward for cold. Sweeper spots him out, just sees the edge of the Jarvan, the flag and drag, the immediate retreat as SK has lane priority here. 
means they can rotate first. Interesting. I thought originally looking at the pathing that Cold had a read about where Selfmade was, and he was going to secure both Raptor camps. Cold still has his own Raptor camp up, and he actually boarded Selfmade's red buff after Selfmade had taken it. And I thought for sure he was going to deny Selfmade's Raptor camp and then walk to his, but the fact that Cold pathed bottom... Ooh, oh. Sacre. This is what we talked about, a lot more kill pressure up against Aniko with a Presti attack. It was vain with Kleptomancy last time we saw uh, Alfari play this matchup, so just a lot less kill pressure in general, but for Cold... He feels confident doing this because he knows he has Alfari, but... He's at a level disadvantage here, and that's a red buff versus a blue buff. Now, they have the man advantage, The self made a little too focused on this one. He's gonna sacrifice Pyrian, TP now coming in, Gold Card buys a bit of time, the stun now comes in, that's first blood. Blows are now coming in. Sakure can continue to try to find damage. Obliterate connects. Death's Grasp will not. Sakure now needs to retreat. Good sidestep there. Has to flash over the wall. And we just watched SK burn all of their early game resources so Selfmade could secure that scuttle grab. I mean, that's a, that's a series of unfortunate events if I've ever seen one. Ooh, Boomerang Blade connects. Nice timing there coming in from Patrick right as the Aftershock falls off. So Dreams takes full damage there. And... Cold is here, Selfmade is here. They're trying to punish Ooh. the lack of flash and TP off of Sakurai, but Selfmade has the read. And of course, Selfmade gets spotted out by the Shape Splitter as well. A really good pathing here from Selfmade to cover his top winner, make sure that this wave can get into the tower so it's not frozen against him. And have to see if this pays off, because look at the CS difference. We have doubled the CS on the side of Selfmade. He should be starting to take ahead, I believe, very close to level five as well. So we're gonna have to see if that sacrifice was worth it, because at the end of the day, this was a, they did not, this was not a great play. So this is scary because you still have the teleport uh, potentially from Mordekaiser, and you can tell that that's what Mord was waiting for here, but uh, Pyrian gets separated from his team, then they burn a lot of flashes, they engage into a fight that is lost from this position, so what I thought looked a little bit sketched from Cold and that he was losing a lot of farm time, a lot of experience, because he had the... the uh, the potential that he could have taken both Raptor camps, he could have gotten the experience league, uh, lead, he could have denied Selfmade getting to that level 6, the big power spike for uh, Vi, but it feels like both junglers uh, have sacrificed a lot for their laners, and Pyrian just kind of threw it. Just a little bit. But I also, to me, on the side of SK, it feels a little more like SK is sacrificing for, for Selfmade. I mean, they collapsed for him, but... That's true. That was just... That was a, that was a lemony snicket. <laughs> Oh, but for now, 600 gold lead still to the side of Origin. You can look across the board, and it's no surprise to see the CS difference in the top side. Yes, the Nico versus the Mordekaiser matchup is pretty heavily going in the favor of Origin. That is a 400 gold lead for the Nico at this stage of the game. Will continue to get worse, but level 6 could be a changing point for the Mord. Do you still have to go toe-to-toe -to -toe with the Pop Blossom on the opposite side? And unfortunately for Sakura, he's just not going to get any control up here because he doesn't have access to Flash Wheels. Alfari does. So you can see he's trying to keep the wave by his tower, but Alfari should feel pretty confident um, that he can try to get this bounce back in his favor and really continue to abuse Sakura, even though Cold's on bottom side. Self-made. Playing with a lot of confidence here as Dream starts to move up, using that bot lane priority, seeing if they get the first collapse. Nuketech has to be careful about stepping down. No package means only the single Valk to take him out to safety. Quick ball break over the wall, takes Selfmade back. Level 6 getting closer and closer. Streams and Crownshot continue to keep the pressure up. Hook going wide from Mithy means that they are just able to sustain the pressure in this lane for now. Selfmade not quite the level 6 at this point, though. Bit unfortunate. Would like to be able to pull off a gank in one of these lanes soon. Cold now moving back to the bottom side of the map. Selfmade continuing to pull ahead, though. That is the level 6 as he starts to finish up the Krug camp. Cold fighting for Vision, getting a little bit, but... As great as Alfari is doing in the top lane, uh, Cold is suffering in the jungle. Well, he's just not getting his level 6, so if Selfmade actually makes a play here in this bot lane with his ultimate while Cold has kind of um, put himself behind in his jungle just to add security to his lanes, then maybe you look back at this footage and you say, well, is that the right decision? What did you think about this matchup? So everything really hinges here. Can Dream slam the Binding? Will Mithy take the bait and try to hook? Binding does connect. Ball Breaker 4. Mithy gonna take a lot of damage. Doesn't get a chance to proc the Aftershock. That's massive. Flashes out to safety. Now is able to proc. It gets a little bit tankier, but not enough. Crown Shot will find the kill. And I would love another look at that to see if Selfmade was able to flash to block the hook. It looked like Mithy was perhaps looking for the dredge line into the wall. I'd have to see it slow down. If so, really cool. Now let's take a look back at that one momentarily. For now, though, successful gank for Selfmade happening in the time frame you talked about. Before Cold gets to level 6, he has it now, so well played by the side of SK. Okay, so let's take another look at this one. The Binding will land, and then they just try to chain the CC together just to get the burst, which is why he uses his ultimate instead of falling it with the flash. Yeah, he flashes to block the dredge line. Very clean. 
And so clean the way they chained the CC to stop him from procting Aftershock, basically cutting his health bar in half by denying him that mastery. And just overall, very clean mechanical play, something that we've kind of come to expect from SK. We have to see, though, in this game, if their team decision-making can match, see what else they can do with the lead, because Cold is now starting to come back in this game. Top lane remains wildly ahead, and you got to respect the package now coming in from Nuke Duck. And um, here's the Ezreal ult. Not going to catch it. Awkward. But there's a response here where um, Dreams is now on the top side of the map. Empyrean also has access to his ultimate. Oh, Empyrean. Empyrean. Now he's just going to get caught out here. They're just going to auto-attack him. He's locked up. Oh, man, that feels like a little bit much. Empyrean! Now it doesn't feel like so much. Dreams now steps forward. The heal is a bit late, but a fantastic play into the mid lane and good use of the package from Nuke Duck. Empyrean, second death of the game. And unfortunately, it's just there's too many of these instances tied together for Empyrean. He has just had a very rough summer split. I felt like... Uh... The verdict was kind of out in spring on how I felt about Purian. We heard some good things. You know, Nemesis was saying that Purian is one of the stronger mid laners when it was coming to scrims early on. But so far, on stage and on tape, uh, Purian just is giving away a lot of free isolated deaths. So until he starts cleaning up his performance, uh, SK are going to continue to really suffer when you don't have that mid lane priority. This is a difficult. We've seen one or two really fantastic performances from Purian, but it just has not been there. Just a lot of variance. Absolutely. Now I have to see what else he can do as the team's reset. Dragon is the name of the game. And you talk about those stats, and here they are. Frostburn, 2.5 KDA behind in his lanes, behind in gold, 500 gold down in laning phase. Yes, some of that's going to be from losses. But as you take a look back at this play, this one's pretty hard to avoid in his defense. But, but it's more so everyone is missing on the map. Uh, you don't have the safety behind you, so why even try to risk it? You can say, you know, he's just going up to, to farm, but it's a free kill that Origin get. Well, and also, you're, you're a Twisted Fate. You're not an incredibly mobile champion who has a like, get-out-of-jail-free card. You don't have a spell shield. Like, your best bet is stun carding a single member. So you do have to play with a bit more respect, and it feels like it just was not there for Pyrian this time around. Does still have his TP, is working towards that Trinity Force a bit behind Nuke Duck, so will still be reasonably strong. Uh, of course, Trinity Force into attack speed items has kind of been the name of the game for TF recently. A bit more utility. Uh, a bit more sustained damage as well. So now what uh, SK want to do is they want Self Mage to take the lead. Anytime his ultimate is up, they're going to be looking to try to use that to make plays. So uh, all Pyrian needs to do at this point is make sure that his ultimate is synced up with Vi's ultimate. They can walk into the river fairly safely, and anytime Self Mage buys himself in a bind, boom, Twisted Fate right there with him. It's a 2v1 scenario. So you're going to constantly see Self Mage with his ultimate walking in aggressively, looking for things that he can take. In that instance, it was the Infernal Dragon, but any buffs he can contest, uh, he's going to be pretty fearless list right now. And they need to get something done. Because Corky now has Trinity Force. Nuke Duck is getting scarier and scarier. Sivir is, you know, working closer and closer to the first item. They absolutely have these windows to play around, but the thing that we learned from the Excel game where they played Mordekaiser is that things don't get really better for this champion uh, if we move late in the game, if you know how to play against it. And OG are already a team that have proven that they know how to play against it. OG are speeding up tempo here, though. They've started the Rift Herald. Now all of SK Gaming are on this side of the map. Ezreal now waddling his way that. Maybe, just maybe. Get something done here. Dreams has to be careful. Binding. Needs to come out if he wants to live. The Aftershock is not going to get procced. Massive. Nuke Duck now on a killing spree. That's going to be an easy Herald. OG are just going to grab that one uncontested. Super late map read there from SK Gaming. And then a lot of disrespect to walk blindly into the area, especially when you're facing that amount of hard CC from the Nautilus. Oh, and things are going from bad to worse for Sakurai. Still have to be careful. Very risky to dive a Mordekaiser. Self-made here, looking to cover as well. Probably could go for the 1v1 on cold if Alfari was not in the area. Warrior versus Cinderhold. Ulti coming out, though. Here we go. Can't go invisible from that one. The true side from TF, more than enough. And Selfmade will grab that kill. Good punish coming in from the side of SK. And there's that fearlessness. The fact that, again, Selfmade is going to feel very confident to make any sort of play like that, knowing that he's got backup in the back pocket. A good response from Origin to immediately drop the Herald. I like the use of the Lux ultimate to try to clear out the wave, but you're still going to get a lot of gold here. Good effort, but overall, I think OG still coming out on top of this play. A lot of gold going to the back pocket of Nuke Duck. This TP coming in, I think, a bit ill-advised. You're not really going to be able to stop. Oh, you are going to be able to stop the Herald from taking the tower. That's pretty crucial. It is going to take one more wave. Maybe SK can find an opportunity to collapse, but while everyone else was topside, OG are just having their way in the mid and bot lanes. But that's going to be a stiff breeze before mid lane tower falls over. And like you're saying, all of that gold is funneled onto Nuke Duck, and he might even get a twisted fate. Black drag, immediate cataclysm, making it look smooth. Pyrian now caught in the midst of everything, trying to lay down a little bit of damage before he goes. Now backstepping. Gold card is going to connect onto Nuke Duck. Oh, the Captain Jack cleansed to make his way out. Nuke Duck will find the kill. Now looking for possibly one more here. Self made on the run. 
Mordekaja coming in though. Can't isolate a single member. Selfman has to be careful here. Challenging Smite is not going to be enough. The buy will fall. Alfari now finds another one. Locked down. Sakurai level 9 to level 10 is just running forward. Movement speed from the Chase Player is going to be massive. A lot of damage comes in from the Mordekaiser. Have to respect it. If he isolates you in the Death Realm, though, the tower will not help him. Alfari will have to back off. And the only silver lining there is the fact that it was Nautilus that picked up the kill instead of Corky being 5-0 and oh right now. But Origin continuing to take everything on the map. And when it's Nuke Duck who's now getting all of this attention, getting all of the gold, he got the Rift Herald. Uh, he's sitting on a Trinity Force and an Essence Reaver at 14 minutes in this game. This Corky hits like a truck at this point in the game. Yeah, you can see it again. Obviously, a lot of initial burst damage comes in from the Cataclysm, but pretty easy for Nuke Duck to just fire forward. Ooh. And the Phosphorus Bomb plus the Sheen Empowered Auto is just an absurd amount of damage. Burning him down with the Corrupting Pot as well. And self-made. Wrong place, wrong time uh, is the story here. But he had pretty much all the information he needed. I think just he also stayed as well. He also knew that his uh, top laner wasn't in a good position. A lot, of, a lot of individual mistakes from multiple members on SK. And rather than focus on those, I'd like to talk a little bit about OG. They did promise us that this week that they would have adapted to the patch, that they would be ready. And while, yes, SK are making some individual mistakes, OG are clearly much more on the same page as a team and seem to be playing much better overall this week. Yeah, and a lot of that is giving resources into uh, Nuketuck. I like the, the response. It didn't necessarily feel like it was an immediate game plan from Origin, but really good um, kind of pivoting and how they were going to problem solve this game, you know, immediately using that Rift Child in the mid lane. It's always nice when you get to use it there, but knowing that they had the numbers advantage. Patrick now going to back off. Dream seems to be careful. Mythic going to try to find the hook. Can look to turn this one around. We'll get knocked up upon landing. Patrick is fine. He just spell shields that one. Mythic is now going to try to walk away. Big damage coming in for Dreams. Cold now trying to turn the play. Eyes on Nuke Duck though. This Corky is massive. He's going to tear through each and every member of the team. He's Gatling getting him down. Dreams tries to buy a bit of time. Will not be the focus. Moving forward, Pierre needs to lock a gold card immediately or his team could die. Gold card comes in. Why are they going forward? So much confidence from the side of SK, but it will not be enough. OG come out on top. Yeah, a lot of confidence, especially coming out of Crown Shot there. We do know that he is a very accomplished Ezreal player. But it looks like Origin aren't going to try to force any sort of tempo. And so they're going to take the kills that they came for, probably shove the wave in, and reset the map. And Nuke Duck is the man to fear. Everyone else here, just to kind of set him up. Patrick also quite strong at this point in the game. It's actually really important that Nuke Duck's delaying their backs um, because he's sitting on his blue buff and his red buff, and the Mountain Dragon is spawning in 14 seconds. It means that the Mountain Dragon's going to be super free for Origin. And you take a look at the setup here. Obviously, the hook misses. Good flash comes out. I like this from Mithy. Good spell shield from Patrick as well. They don't sink the cooldowns enough. And uh, Mithy obviously pays his life for it, but Patrick, a lot of other AD carries would have died there with a the mistimed spell shield, not Patrick. I like how Cold takes that kill. He's earned it. He had a rough jungle. It's all it took a lot from him. And now OG, very easy for them to grab this Mountain Drake. SK very much on the back foot, not just in terms of map positioning, but in terms of just raw gold values as OG continue to pull further and further ahead. So now comes the desperation plays from SK yeah. Gaming. Where is it going to be? And that's the graph that I wanted to point out before we got into the replay. Look at Nuke Duck compared to everyone else on the map. Yeah, that's 9.5k. His only competition is Alfari, who is 3.2k behind him. That's a lot of gold. That's he's, like an IE difference between two players. He's a big boy. Oh, good use of the Shade Splitter. Once he, just spotting it out. Spidey senses. Uh, tingling there. Eska Gaming have missed their window though. You see the immediate missing pings coming up the lane. They know that Origin, this has stalled, this play has stalled out long enough that Origin will get their pieces um, in the right position. And SK Gaming are not on even footing. They cannot fight a fair fight. This has got to be like, find them in a dark alley. Make sure that you have every advantage available and before they take the fight. The only thing I will say is that Sakurai's ult is literally build the dark alley. And Patrick now has to be careful. Crown shot will whiff on the ultimate. That's that surely would have been death for Patrick. And SK, very attached to that top lane tower. Don't know if that's the right choice, or, but I don't really think there's a lot of options. I think OG at this point have very tactically limited most of the potential for SK to kind of do anything, as is very often the case when a team has a 4K, or rather a 6K gold lead. But Origin can kind of continue to sit in this formation and funnel on gold while they get the uh, last standing objectives for free. You can see uh, good eyes from Nuke Duck and Mithy. They sat in that river on three control wards. They waited until the waves rolled back in when their own team got back into position, then just walked back into the lanes, picked up the free gold, and now continue to kind of creep their vision line forward on this map. The good news for SK is that 
while Nuketuk is a terrifying raid boss who will kill everyone, they're actually pretty close to the remaining members of the team, right? 7k gold lead, 4k of that is in the back pocket of Nuketuk. The rest is pretty evenly distributed across the rest of the team. So they can, in theory, get a fight if Nuketuk is not there. I but mean, in theory, but... In theory. Who is your, uh, your good target to choose from? Yeah, again, it's very hard to put an Ezreal and a Lux far enough down that they become useless at this point in the game. They'll still hurt if they find you, but... I mean, unless you hit Patrick, you don't really have a lot of good options here for Dreams or Crown Shot. And that's the thing you brought up when you talked about Sivir and the champ select, is that one of the few champions that doesn't need Tom Kench to, to be relatively safe. Has that built-in uh, self-defense in the spell shield. So there's one. Pulling back now. Checking on Nuke Duck. To see how much damage... Oh, the package is so incredibly strong. No one can come anywhere new, near Nuke Duck. Not only because he will see them coming from a mile away with all of that vision underneath him, but also because he will just murder them. And you can see the assist ping coming from Nuke Duck, so Patrick is going to force the way forward so that they have mid-priority. He's going to walk across this landing strip that Origin have created. And they have. I mean, we could see a very early Baron if OG want to commit it, here. I think Origin actually just want to find SK. A lot of damage going down on the Mithy. He's going to have to hook his way out. Selfmate now going for the play, though. This is surely going to get turned against them. Mithy's still alive. They're going to try to body block for him, but he does get taken down. TP coming through in the end. And meanwhile, Afari is on the bottom side. Pyrian steps forward. Stun connects, but Nuketuk holds the cleanse. The devastating nature of Ezreal and Lux. And yes, that was a full team effort from SK to follow it up. But again, these two champions, if they find you, it doesn't matter what their scoreline is, they will turn it into a kill. So nicely done from SK Gaming, and they just need to find more of this. They need that hit-and-run uh, style of League of Legends, which luckily, because they do have long-range ultimates between Lux and Ezreal, and then have the uh, Destiny, yeah. they can actually achieve that. Now, though, Sakurai might be in trouble. He uses the Death Realm, tries to buy a bit of time. Oh, if I just take Tower, I go. There you go. Bit of damage goes down onto him. Will now come out of the death row. Goes over the wall, tries to buy it a time. Ooh, well layered there. Shut down, coming through. That's going to be big. A lot of gold into the pocket of Sakurai. Very nicely done. That's now two hit and runs that SK have managed to secure. And this feels like just the, the raw power of non-committal CC. So many of these skills hitting. And honestly, here we give him a lot of flack, but I got to say, good patience. Locks the gold card, throws the wild cards to try to bait the spell shield. Don't even know if Patrick had it, but gold card connects in the end, and that's ultimately all that matters. That said, Origin's still probably not feeling uh, too much pressure. They know that they're very close to uh, kind of key item breakpoints here. The dragon is going to be spawning soon. They didn't lose a lot outside of the shutdown bonuses of those few picks being picked up, so it's not like SK Gaming have now swung themselves wildly back into this game. No, definitely not the case. Patrick, though, will TP back to mid lane. Cool. Now potentially going to look to fish for a play. Good bit of vision from the Lucent Singularity. Have to be careful though walking into this mid lane. Crown Shot can get out, Pyrian cannot. He also needs to be careful uh, because they know that they're relying on the travel time from Nuketuk and Alfari, that they can't immediately be there. So Origin are still just jockeying for position and not necessarily playing for a pick, whereas uh, SK Gaming, definitely playing for picks. Gold card is going to connect. Good bit of damage. self -made can now come in, but Alfari is quite strong. It is on the on-hit Nico, so that pop-off is not going to do a lot. Good bit of damage now comes down. Trader for the Ocean Drake. Can they just tack out Alfari here? And they get it. Yet another pick bound from SK. Crown Shot now trying to escape, but the hook goes onto the Wolves. Not what Mithy wanted whatsoever. TF Ultimate coming out as well, and Crown Shot, he's looking for an opportunity here. He's still playing oh, forward. Tier 2 mid will go wave. down. So we'll just be a tower for tower traded, plus the kill over to SK, but... Origin not quite as able, uh, quite able to close this one out cleanly with the lead that they built earlier. But like you're saying, I think that's what the third shutdown in a row that SK have managed to secure here out into these side lanes. So yeah, the map is still hemorrhaging. They're still losing a lot of objectives, but at least finding some opportunities and advantages where they can. Now though, they do still have to be careful here. Mord can't force a one v one at any point, and will most likely force it against Mithy. He is playing a little bit back, I think, to try to avoid that. You can see him just hovering on the outside. He'll hook in if he has to, but does not want to be the target of the Death Realm. So they're just going to walk towards Baron, potentially. Pick for a pick at the end of the day. Really, Sakura, I... It's overstayed is welcome. So this is what happened on the map simultaneously. As soon as Mordekaiser died, all of SK Gaming assist pinged the, uh, the Baron because you're looking at Pyrian who doesn't have TP or Destiny. He immediately was bottom. He starts running towards the Baron. They're like, uh-oh. But 
Origin decide that they'd rather take the map reset. They definitely don't have vision control of that area. You can see in their inventory now, they've bought the uh, proper control wards. So I guess SK Gaming caught a lucky break right there that Origin like, it's not a perfect setup now. Let's get the proper vision control. We can choke them out of this area before we turn on this objective. Now, yeah, SK are back to praying for picks to try to find a way back into this game. It looked good there for a few moments, but now they got to fight for this vision control. Self-made being on the bottom side of the map is not ideal, but OG, once again, waiting, hesitating to start this one. The Scuttle Crab is pretty key there. And really the potential for chain CC here between the gold card and the binding and the vibe means that OG do still have to respect SK, but very difficult for SK to win any actual follow-on fight. Yeah, because there's just so many damage threats on this Origin squad right now that even if they do chain CC and they delete someone, preferably Nuke Duck, yeah. um, Patrick is still going to hit quite hard, as is Alfari at this point in the game. So there's still a lot more ways for Origin to navigate these team fights. It really does feel like like a, pretty much a shotgun versus machine, right? Like obviously OG just have so many continuous threats. Oh, Nuke Duck, they're going for that it. Scary. Okay, that's an engaged little Messiah version two is what we're going to call that one. Nuke Duck. Going in, getting a little bit more, but Mithy has now been taken down, and SK still able to find a few kills here. Sakurai coming in on the back side. It looks like they might be able to find one. Purian on the retreat. Cold, still alive, but barely. Sakurai now moving forward. Big obliterate, but Crown Shot now on a killing spree. Sakurai stepping forward. Death Realm, no, not going to come out. Has now been used, but the Boomerang Blade will find the kill. Nuke Duck and Patrick still alive, but a mess of a fight. I mean, that was crazy from Nuke Duck. I'm surprised he survived it. Shout out to Crown Shot on the back half of that fight. He was definitely putting out the damage, able to disengage himself from the Nika ultimate just in time, and I believe uh, picked up Alfari on the back half. If Crown Shot hadn't been zoned out from a lot of those minions, I think he was going to continue to chase and clean up that fight. He is hitting very hard at this point in the game. And explain this one to me, Frosco. Okay, so Nuke Duck feeling very confident that his team is flanking. Like you said, the Messiah 2.0 starts the fight, then immediately uh, stasis and then flashes out. But look at Crown Shot and how much uh, DPS he's doing. Ah, uh, if that Mystic Shot and W combination had hit right there, that might be a completely different fight because you don't have this, uh, another one of Origins members. He would have immediately deleted someone else. Ooh, looks like he comes out of the Death Realm right in time. Patrick able to find a kill there at the end, but I can confirm that after that fight, Sakurai has now dealt more damage than expect. We're on the board. So, better performance. But for OG, it feels like on the back of that play, they are set up now to take total control of the Baron. And they have literally the two perfect drakes for taking Baron, Ocean and Mountain. But they don't even need to, because Nuketuck is now pressuring in on the top side. He has three and a half items completed. Can go for the GA if he wants to. Might be a good choice because he's so far ahead. Or can just to finish the IE and try to stomp this one out. There's no Destiny available for Purian just yet, so can't use it. Self-made, no flash, has the ultimate available. Luxalt will be uncomfortably close, but will not be able to take the Baron in the end. That's OG securing it. 7K gold lead, 26 minutes into the game. Sakura in the meanwhile on the bot lane does not feel confident to step forward anymore. And uh, SK will walk away empty-handed. And on this back, they're basically going to have everything that they want. Um, you can see that Patrick is just on the very tip of three items there for the Sivir. Um, this Corky has been huge all game long. He now has four completed items. So. Origin choked out SK's vision line. They found the appropriate pick. They turned it into the Baron. They've now got all of the items that they want firmly in the driver's seat. And at this point, you look at the game, you're like looking for a miracle for SK Gaming to come back. This needs to be pick after pick after pick. Because Origin can just walk it down these lanes, stay bundled up, and feel very secure in their team fight. Yeah, and they showed us a bit of that in the mid game. They had a few moments where they really did look like they came together, peering and self made, especially, but it's only going to get harder here. The tier twos have been knocked down outside of the one in the bottom lane. The vision line from OG is getting pushed further and further forward. Choked out such an accurate descriptor to what's happening to SK right now. And can they find an opportunity to breathe? I. Don't know if it's going to happen. Crown Shot, though, still flirting with disaster, willing to step forward. So at least a good sign in terms of confidence. I'm going to say confident. I like that yeah. word. I think Crown Shot's very fun to watch in Ezreal. It's cool because in the LEC, we have a lot of really talented Ezreal players. Patrick also comes to mind. Another ocean, though, will help them sustain the siege. OG setting their sights on the bottom side of the map. Alfari will start to push in the mid lane in turn. Gold card will connect and out they go. Looking to try to take down Patrick, but the rest of the team is here on the back side. No, the Ezreal is coming in. Looking to TP on the back. Here comes the Mordekaiser. He can lock down Nuke Duck. He can take him out of the fight. The cleanse, though, up and available for Nuke Duck. Can he get out safely? Big amount of damage coming in. Cold is first on the list. The Death Realm comes in. He wants to steal those stats, but Alfari ready to find a flank of his own. Decimate does land, but it doesn't look like it'll be enough. Cold still on the outside. Isn't able to find it. The Death Grasp is there. Alfari now needs to step in. Period gets taken out. Nuke Duck is so incredibly strong. Nuke Duck is so incredibly strong. 
I'll say it one more time. Noob Duck is so strong. That's the Quadra. And what more can you say? That Corky is disgusting. Who took the Penta? Ah, oh, that was just gross there, especially the last part of that team fight where he manages to sidestep, get underneath SK Gaming, and just rip them open from the inside. Brutal play from Nuke Duck. And that's going to be it. OG just going to walk this one down. Nuke has been a 10-0-6 from Nuke Duck. And uh, it looks like after that Aatrox performance last week, he wanted a little bit of redemption here. Waves are coming in. Maybe, just maybe. OG looks like they're going to back off here. I feel like they could end the game, but they do not want to take the risks. And that's, yeah, that's an 8k gold lead over your lane opponent. Well highlighted, observers. Ah, oh, just brutal here. So again, the plan seems very sound. You got the spell shield, you're just gonna delete Patrick, but the problem is, is it's a multiple damage composition here. I like the snipe, but unless you're killing Nuke Duck, you still have to deal with this massive Corky. But I don't think a team fight looks better than what SK Gaming got. Alfari's not there. You can see that he's trying to figure out how to get into the team fight. Everyone is split up, but the damage is disgusting. And of course, if you're wondering why Cold stole it, uh, stood still there, he was at the edge of the death round. We cannot see it in the Spectator client currently. Uh, and Dreams, of course, oh. He wasn't even aiming at the other guy. That was just convenience. Like, he just walked in front of the bullet at that point. They're literally falling into Nuke Duck's lap. He's like, I can't, I can't even hold all these kills. Here comes the airplane. <laughs> Open up. <laughs> oh, and he's got the package now too. The good news is Crown Shot's in second place. The bad news is, is that his team's 10k gold behind. Also getting <laughs> close to being in second place. Yes, in this game. Oh. One final siege. It looks like from the side of OG. SK not feeling as comfortable as they once did to step forward. And the tower slowly but surely being burnt down. Ezreal, the only real champion with a dash out to safety, or at least a reliable one, if I can be interrupted. Uh, he's the only one comfortable to step forward. Sakurai, though, may change that. Decimates the wave, and OG just slowly walking in, waiting for the creeps on the bottom side. Period now responds. OG move in on the top side. It's a little bit of a dance here, back and forth. Nuke Tuk, though, gets to break the rules. He gets to leap forward. He gets to throw out a bit of damage. Sakurai just fishing with the Death's Grasp here. Good sidestep on the binding, won't even need to use the spell shield. Ooh, good chase CC. Patrick gone, that's one threat. Maybe now SK trying to find something self-made, leaps to the backside, they're trying to take out Cole, but Cole just leaps back into the middle of the team and tries to find an opportunity. Goes gold and buys a bit of time. Self-made goes back in, Sakurai. Tries to find himself in the midst. The team needs to use the death round with one to make it out of this one. We'll use it on Cole, looking for the 1v1 instead. But in the meantime, Crown Shot has been locked up and taken out. OG are winning the fight, even if Sakurai will take the 1v1. Double kill for Alfari. Finally, he's just able to show up in one of these fights. And no one can deal with Nuke Duck's damage right now. It was the best college try there from Dreams of Crown Shot. They really gave it their all. They're continuing to try to hold the fort here with Pyrian. Might be able to. Sakurai now coming in. Death's Grasp will be big if Sakurai can land it. Good bit of damage, but will not be able to connect. How far? Just going to walk him down. One tower left. Mithy with his eyes on the prize. Pyrian locked up and taken out. And I think Sakurai might just be next on the menu. A lot of Mordekaiser damage, but not nearly enough. That's going to do it. That's going to be it. OG find the win. Origin just eats Mordekaisers for breakfast. And that's what's crazy to me. I, at the end of the day, fantastic, fantastic game from OG. And you saw SK trying to force plays consistently, and that is something that I like to see from them. But when you go back to the draft, you watch OG disassemble a team in the late game and just make sure the Mordekaiser couldn't do anything. Two, three, Origin! And I respect that they thought that they could do better, but it's just such a risk. And I don't know if you had to take it. I just think it's very dangerous to give that matchup when uh, Origin feel confident that they can guarantee themselves a strong side of that map every single time. And then what Origin can do when they're able to leverage a pressure point like that. And then also the fact that that early game fumble in the river, the fact that Corky got so snowballed, like that's only one element of the fact that in this game, it was a 10-0 and 10 Corky. Yeah, at the end of the day, you're a Twisted Fate, and while your scaling is pretty good, and obviously you always have the gold card, you're both racing for Trinity Force in the current meta, and whoever gets the Trinity Force first just completely wins. Hey, uh, Cold. Hey, Cold. Do you, uh, do you want to... You got something to say to us? Uh, producers, I, I'm sorry if we didn't give you the heads up. Cold did commit, if we could turn on Shoutcaster Headset 3. He told us that after he won this week, that he would make a wonderful animal sound. 
for the entire, the animal sounds that would be the key to Origins victory. If you could just give that a little test test. You gotta make make the sound. Wait, make the sound. Did he just dog you on the sound? I do make him make the sound, Lord. He needs to make an animal sound. Ladies and gentlemen, that was cold. Thank you, cold, for your time here. He committed to the bet. He told us that OG would get better. He lost you the belt, and he didn't make our our animal sound, Andre. You're missing some context here, folks. But the bottom line is, OG came out on top. Cold now gets to make some sign of animal sound. Yeah, yeah. And overall for OG, this is a good sign heading into the second half of the split. It's an amazing sign from OG. This is like a completely different team. Revitalized. And normally when teams say, hey, it's the patch, hey, it's jet lag or the week, oftentimes the next week they still underperform and you're left wondering, okay, what's the real reason? But when they say, hey, this is what went wrong, and they turn the entire performance around, then you don't have to question them as much. And things start to look a little bit better. The question, though, for me, is can they move into the top, back into the top three? Can they take down one of our premier teams? Because at this point, Rogue has taken names. Like, they are racing up the standings right now. I think it's all just about timing. Uh, Origin have made it very clear that while regular season games are, of course, important because no one has locked yet, their eyes on the prize for the playoffs and that they will be in their final form and they will be ready when the pressure comes onto them. So they've made it very clear that they're looking for the long haul. So until then, I don't want to be too hard on the Origin camp, especially when we get a bounce back like that. That was a phenomenal performance. Definitely the case. And uh, luckily for us, we also get to hear the other side of the story is Crown Shot. It will be joining us on PGL. So nice. uh, we can hear a little bit more about what's been going on in the I SK mean, camp. I was like the one man army. Him and Dreams were trying to hold the fort like the Spartans got their shields up the, and they were the just like ass Leonidas you're supposed to work with me I'm just saying words from the movie Kia player of the game at all esports on Twitter thank you prompter for scrolling just in time Alfari cold nuke duck that's where you can keep a top side I'm gonna of the map. say nuke top duck's side. gonna get it Absolutely. I'm just gonna go out on a, a limb here he was what 9k gold <laughs> ahead of his I don't think you can give it to anyone else the quality is so big it's I'm not gonna be as strict as I was with you guys last time where I like threatened to jump through into the internet, which I, I don't think I can actually do. We'll find out later. It's loose. It's the end of the day, guys. Um, but we'll find out who you want to vote for. Alfari, your argument would be, I really like people side splitting on side lanes. That does it for me. And that's fair, if that's you. Cold, your argument would be, I like it when people fall behind in the early game to support their laners. Now, if you lane in solo queue, I understand that too, because all I want is a jungler who repeatedly ganks my lane. He was also there when everything started to go wrong for SK Gaming, when they started to contest that scuttle crab. True, true. But for more on Origin Win, let's check in with Lore and their jungler who's definitely going to make an animal sound for us. Thank you, guys, and thank you, Coles, for joining me. We'll get to that later. About the game, were you expecting this one, considering how close you and SK are in the standings? Uh, I mean, I, I expect us to win against SK Gaming. Uh, that's, that's kind of a given uh, if we want to reach like high in the standing. But um, I, I think with the, how we played in, in the last couple of weeks, it's nothing is really sure. Uh, it's kind of how we show up on stage. And we had some specific things we worked on this week, and some of it showed in the, in the game. I think we, we saw Origin that was trying more stuff in the early game and, and fighting more. And I even like kind of lost my voice a little bit because I was, I was talking too much. And, that's never good when I talk too much. So uh, yeah, it was uh, it was a fun game. Yeah, but I mean, a juggler talking with his teammate—that's what's supposed to happen, right? So I would get, say that's a positive thing. Yeah. In uh, Euphoria, you mentioned the fact that Rift Rivals affected your prep, and you had a sick player as well. So how was yeah. it this week? Uh, I mean, this week we—I uh, think it, it's clear after the last week that uh, the origin that showed up last week was not the origin that we wanna wanna show. So we we sat down, we talked about things. That's how we do. That's how we do it. Uh, we figured out what is it we need to get better at in order to to win, and uh, we we worked on it. It has been a stressful week. Not gonna lie, we 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 have been ramping up and down a lot in our performance. But uh, I think the way we played today was was at least more the way I want to wanna go forward. So I'm, I'm happy. I agree on that. And you talked about proactivity in the early game. So what else do you need to work on right now? Uh, a, a lot of things, I think. Uh, we had, we had kind of the issue that after we went to referrals, we came back and uh, the meta was different, the picks were different. We didn't adapt well. So first of all, we need to figure out like uh, how, how, what is it actually we're going to play. Uh, 
thank God Riot made a new patch with almost no changes in the 9.14 we have to fix. Uh, so uh, we, we uh, compared to that, we also had a really, I think at least on stage, we have really bad early games. And that is, some of, most of it is actually on me because uh, that uh, the early game is dictated by the jungler. So I had some, some poor performances and uh, we are trying to fix it as a team. Uh, it's a team effort, but uh, in the end, the early game is often dictated by the genre. So uh, most of it is on me, but uh, I think as a team, we, we play well. We, we played better today, so uh, it makes me happy. Yeah. Well, that's great to hear because it's not all on you. Um, what I want to know now, it's halfway through the splits. Uh, you played every team, every team played every team. So what do you think about the state of the league as it is right now? Oh, man, I think we have a lot of uh, teams that are rising compared to spring. There are a lot of teams that uh, were uh, in spring. If I went into the game and we would just play like an average game, I'm sure we would win. But uh, uh, teams like Rogue, Rogue is starting to play better. Uh, Splice is playing exceptional. Uh, and there are, even Schalke is playing well. So there are so many teams now that you have to play well against to beat. And I, I think that's just... That's just super fun as a competitor because uh, uh, it's no fun just to go on stage and, and you just like auto win. It's it's more fun to just go up there and actually feel like you deserve to so deserve the win. So uh, it, it's a good time to be a European fan. I agree, and we saw so many surprises in the last few weeks. Now we know that Vitality is underperforming. Excel is doing much better. Uh, what what can we expect from the teams that are underperforming or overperforming maybe at the moment? Uh, what can we expect? I, I don't even know. Like, I mean, uh, if I were to figure it out, I would probably go ask them. Uh, I don't really know. Uh, mm -hmm. It's funny because in the summer, it's a lot about your mental fortitude and how you can deal with it. If you have a, a rough spring split, how do you deal with like also a rough start in summer? Some teams collapse, some teams stay strong. And I think the teams that will shine in the end are the teams that stay strong. So I'm excited to see who has the better mental fortitude. And what about when you had an amazing spring split and things don't always go your way in summer? I mean, I'm not looking at anyone here, obviously. Are you talking about us? <laughs> okay, uh, yeah. So, well, then for us, uh, it's funny because you say that because uh, we were actually 4-4 in the spring split and now we are 5-4 and we were the same in, in spring, so things are going according to plan. Well, perfect then. Thank you very much for your insights, Cold. And to wrap up the day, we're going to send it to Shox for the post-game lobby. Take it away.